Hi everyone, welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this motherboard from Biostar. This is the Biostar Hi-Fi Z77X. Let's start off with a closer look at the box. And this is a Z77 chipset motherboard, which means it's for Intel processors. It supports both second and third gen Intel uh, core processors, which means codename Sandy Bridge or codename Ivy Bridge. Z77 came out with Ivy Bridge, so chances are you're going to be installing an Ivy Bridge processor in here. There's a little bit of uh, change in functionality if you do go with the Sandy Bridge, so I'll point that out. Um, primarily, it relates to the PCI Express lanes. Uh, speaking of that, you do have support for two-way uh, Crossfire X and two-way SLI configurations with this motherboard, so if you're going to go with a dual video card setup, you can. You also get a list of features here on the front, which are repeated on the back with words next to them, so I'm going to switch around to that so we can read the words. So this is the Puro Hi-Fi Z77X from Biostar, and they've really put a lot of attention into the audio componentry on the motherboard. Heralds a new age in audio experience, and its goal is to make your PC as a professional media and entertainment center. Okay. So that being said, uh, you actually get a, a calibration microphone that comes in the box, and you can use that to automatically calibrate the multiple channels of audio. You can do up to 7.1 sound audio out. You also get smart ears so you can turn your impedance up or down if you're using higher quality headphones. Uh, that's as part of the software that's included. You also get hi-fi caps so they're using high quality non-polarized electrolysis elect electric audio capacitors for each audio channel circuit. So that's basically saying they're using high quality components to make sure you get high quality audio on the board. Same with the resistors, metal oxide film resistors for stability and re reliability. Uh, independent power design for a significant reduction in electrical noise and superb sound quality. Also hi-fi ground, which is noise blocking multi-layer PCB design. They've also put a little groove in the PCB, which I'll show you, which separates the audio componentry from the rest of the board. Uh, you get a built-in amplifier that can push high-end headphones with 100 decibel loads. Uh, you also get hi-fi hi Blu-ray, 192 kilohertz, 24-bit sound and 110 decibel signal to noise ratio. Uh, you actually get electrostatic discharge protection of up to 15,000 volts um, for your front panel I.O. So um, that's if you're going to be plugging in the front panel mic and headphone jacks. PCI Express 3.0, of course, that's if you go with an Ivy Bridge processor. Uh, if you go with Sandy Bridge, it's got a PCIe Gen 2 controller. Um, it's not a huge difference using today's video cards, but I will point that out when we get in to the box. Uh, USB 3.0, of course, Virtual MVP can help you switch between a discrete video card and the integrated GPU in your Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processor to increase your gaming performance. Smart Speed LAN for, for use with the included network interface card. THX True Studio Pro Surround controls the level of immersion, audio immersion in music, movies, and games. Of course, you get the Bio2 remote functionality, which is Biostar's remote control. Oh, you can actually use your phone as a remote control. Taking a look inside the box, we have some accessories. You get an input-output shield there. It is black. That's for the back of your computer case. Install this first before the motherboard. It's also got some electromagnetic shielding in the form of some squishy padding on the back, which is nice. You get two bridges right here for two-way crossfire or two-way SLI. So you actually do get a crossfire ribbon-style cable bridge right there. You also get an SLI uh, rigid PCB-style bridge right there if you're going to go with an NVIDIA or an AMD two-card solution. You get the Biostar Intel Series motherboard driver disc. So this is going to have the drivers for the Z77 chipset as well as other components on the board. Your best bet is to head to the Biostar website to download the latest versions of those drivers as well as the latest version of the software for this board because the software does control some of the functionality. Here is your Hi-Fi Z77X product manual which gives you amongst other things a list of all of the componentry involved as well as a walkthrough of general CPU or computer building construction as well as which ports are which and uh, one of the more interesting things as far as what you wouldn't typically see in a manual that is if I can find it quickly and smoothly here I'm sure I can here we go all right smart ear so there's the smart ear software. So here's where you can gain access to stuff like turning on the high-low gain switch if you're going to use some high impedance headphones, as well as over on the left side here, uh, you get a status mode uh, panel so you can sort of set up all your speakers. And that's what you use with the included microphone to set up that automatic surround sound adjustment. Speaking of the microphone, here it is. 
got a very long cable, which is necessary because you want to position this microphone wherever you, the listener, would most likely be. And then uh, you simply run through the software and that will set up your surround sound for you. This can do 7.1 surround sound, by the way. You also get some serial ATA cables as well as a Biostar uh, Velcro cable tie, which I find to be quite handy. Uh, you get, looks like, four total serial ATA cables. They're SATA Revision 2 or 3 compatible. Well, 1, 2, or 3 compatible. Uh, they all have the metal clasps. They all have straight plugs on both ends. Now let's take a look at the motherboard. And here's a look at the motherboard itself. I'm showing you guys the back of the motherboard just so you can see it has a nice flat black PCB. It blends in very nicely. It should match with most computer systems. Also wanted to point out if you can see where my finger is tracing right along here, this little groove sort of lighter color groove that goes on down the entire side of the board. Keep that in mind. I'm going to com be coming back to it when I talk about the audio. All right, so here's a look at the front of the board. Uh, as you can see, they've gone with a primarily black color scheme with some blue highlights over the heat sinks here, as well as some of the audio capacitors here on the left side. I also wanted to point out the system fan headers. You get three of them total. You get a CPU fan header, a four-pin PWM one right there at the top. Also a system fatter, fan header right here below the VRM heatsink, and then a third, which is down here at the bottom of the motherboard between the comm and the infrared port. Now I'm going to talk about the components on the motherboard in detail. I'm going to start down here in the lower right-hand corner, and uh, here you can see these color-coded pinouts. Those are your front panel headers. They are labeled, so you can see the labels on the board for power, LED, reset, switch, and all that good stuff. So they're all right there, grouped in the same area, and pretty easy to, to spot. Above that, you actually also have a debug LED. So if you're getting your system up and running, you can use that. Uh, use it with the manual to see the code that might be displayed there. If you're having any issues with the system, you, that will help you more accurately determine what that is. And once the system is up and running, that will work as a temperature readout for your CPU temperature. Uh, next, next to that you have, well I should say right above it, you have uh, your BIOS chip. Uh, it's a single BIOS chip on the board but it is swappable in the dire situation that you need to do that. You also have surface mounted power and reset buttons right there. You have a couple USB 2.0 headers right there. Let me lift up the board a little bit so you can see the label. There we go. USB 1 and USB 2 right there. Each of those can power a couple USB 2.0 ports. You also get a COM header over here. There's the aforementioned system, hand, system fan header. There's your infrared header. And then you also get an SPDIF out right there for the audio. Now, as mentioned, audio is a highlight of this board. So uh, here on the left side, you can see all the componentry. And there you can also see that sort of lighter colored line that goes down the side of the board. Uh, that's part of the PCB layout. And they've done that essentially to separate the audio componentry over here uh, with the rest of the components on the board to reduce the interference and noise that you might encounter there. There's also those high quality caps that they've used. They also have a little bit of shielding here over the codec as well as uh, the audio uh, driver that's underneath there as well as the uh, headphone amp that is also underneath that little chip. So there's all your audio component trees, Puro, Hi-Fi, as previously mentioned, and that goes all the way up around to your analog outs, which are right up here on the rear panel I.O. Moving over here to the PCI Express, uh, you'll notice you have three single speed shorter PCI Express ports or slots right there. You also have three full length 16x slots, the uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, and seventh slots right here, full length. Uh, again, you will get PCI Express Gen 2 compatibility if you install a Sandy Bridge or second gen core processor from Intel into this motherboard. Uh, if you go with a third gen Ivy Bridge processor, uh, you'll get PCI Express Gen 3 compatibility, uh, and that essentially doubles your bandwidth as well as increases the efficiency with which the uh, PCI slots here can communicate with the processor. Uh, if you are going with that Gen 3 chip, you'll get uh, X16, X8, an X4 on these three. If you're going to run two-way Crossfire X or SLI, you'll get X8 and X8 on uh, these two full-length slots. And then again, that uh, final slot there runs at X4 maximum. Moving over to the right, uh, we see our heatsink right there, and that's on top of our Z77 chipset. And the Z77 chipset is tying a lot of the stuff on this motherboard together. It also has a a PCH integrated peripheral controller hub and that also has a SATA controller. So these are your SATA ports right here. Uh, the two on the right side, SATA 1, are SATA Rev 3, 6 gigabit per second. The four on the left here are SATA Rev 2, 3 gigabits per second. So if you are going with a higher end storage device such as an SSD, you will want to make sure you plug it into those upper ports because that's going to be much faster than the lower four. 
Moving up the side of the board, we have a 24-pin main motherboard power connector, and then next to that, we have our DDR3 DIMM slots. This board supports dual-channel DDR3, so you are going to want to buy your sticks in sets of two, and uh, you can reference the motherboard to, I'm sorry, you can reference the manual to indicate which uh, sticks will go in which slots to make sure that you're getting set up for dual channel. It supports up to 8 gigabyte DIMMs, so you can have up to 32 gigabytes total installed there if you go with four 8 gig DIMMs. To the left of that, you have the 1155 socket right there, and that's for your processor. Again, Intel Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge processors are supported. Surrounding that, you can see the power delivery area here. Each of those has a heat sink above it to help keep the uh, MOSFETs cool because those are some of the parts of the motherboard that get the most hot. Uh, and then finally over here on the upper left, you have an 8-pin uh, supplemental CPU power connector, so you can run the power connector from your motherboard, I'm sorry, from your power supply over that, plug that in and make sure you get all the power delivery you need to, uh, so to power your processor, especially if you're going to be overclocking. One other uh, output here, actually, that I neglected to mention, which is down here near the PCI uh, slots right there, and that's your USB 3.0 connector, so a 20-pin USB 3 connector. You can use that for front or rear uh, USB 3.0 slots or ports. Um, which some newer cases have, or you can get a little add-on card, and uh, it'll give you a couple more USB 3.0 slots. You also get two USB 3 slots, or three ports there on the back, so you get four USB 3 total. Uh, you get four more USB 2.0 ports here as well, two there and two there for USB 2.0. You also get a PS2 connector there for a keyboard. You also get an HDMI, dual link DVI, and VGA out. Uh, the, this motherboard does support uh, dual monitors, so uh, if you do get an Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge processor with an integrated GPU, which most of them have, you can use these for those video outs. Uh, and again, you can use two of these three at a time to support two monitors. Uh, it is dual link DVI as well as the HDMI. Uh, finally, right up here, you have your network connector. That's a Realtek RTL 8111F 10100-1000 gigabit Ethernet port. And then finally, you have your audio outs right there if you're going to go with analog audio. Uh, again, this is 7.1 channel support. Uh, you can use that in coordination with that microphone I showed you to set up your multi-channel multi surround sound. And the codec uh, is the Realtek ALC898. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Biostar Hi-Fi Z77X motherboard, which features the Z77 chipset and the 1155 socket for Intel 2nd or 3rd gen Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, do not forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.